Oh, my name's Ben Thrash. I'm an extension entomologist with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. And today we're at a soybean field that's got a little defoliation going on in the tops of the plants. And something that we want to show you and that a lot of people have trouble with is overestimating how much defoliation they have out in a soybean field. Now what we see with a lot of insects like bean leaf beetles, green clover worms, velvet bean caterpillar, is that they'll start feeding up in the top of the canopy. And uh, they just kind of stay up in the top of the soybean canopy. And so when you initially go out there to a soybean field, it looks like you have a lot of defoliation. But what we want to show you is that throughout the rest of the canopy of the plant, there's still a lot of leaves there and there's really not as much defoliation as you think there is. Now with some other insects like soybean loopers, they start feeding from the bottom of the canopy and they come to the top. So if you start seeing defoliation from soybean loopers up in the top of the plant, then they've already caused quite a bit of injury to your soybean field. So a lot of times when people go out into a soybean field and they're trying to estimate defoliation, they'll just look up at the top of the plant. They see all this defoliation up in the top of the plant and it looks pretty serious. However, when you pull the canopy back and you look at the leaves down lower, there's hardly any defoliation down in some of these lower leaves. And so it's important for a grower or a consultant uh, to look at the whole entire plant to get an idea of how much defoliation is in the plant and don't just pay attention to those upper leaves. So this just kind of shows you the difference in types of defoliation that we have out here. This is from a bean leaf beetle and you can tell that it's bean leaf beetles by the shot hole appearance of these, uh, of these leaves. It's just a bunch of little holes out here in these leaves. Whereas compared to a caterpillar, they'll eat large sections out of, these, uh, out of these plants, out of the leaves here. And you can tell the difference. It's pretty obvious comparing these two kinds of leaves. So this field that we're in is right at about 10% defoliation. And you gotta remember our threshold is 25% defoliation. Now, if the grower would have treated this field several weeks ago, whenever the defoliation started showing up, he would have took care of those defoliators, but now we have a threshold level of stink bugs out in this field. So then that would turn into two applications. So paying attention to our thresholds are very important and not spraying on the initial defoliation really saved this grower a lot of money, turning what could have been two applications into a single application that could take care of both types of uh, defoliating insects and the stink bugs out in this field. All right, so here we have several uh, growth stages that are important to know in soybeans. Uh, this is kind of a mid R5.5 uh, soybean pod. This is a, is a good R6. You can see the membrane is still intact on, that, on those uh, seeds whenever you split the pod wall open, when you split the pod open. And you can see on this, this is our six and a half soybean where the membrane actually separates from those seed really easy whenever you split that pod open. So these growth stages are important to know. Uh, so stink bugs, our threshold actually doubles whenever you reach this growth stage. When you reach R6, our, st our stink bug threshold goes from nine per 25, and then it doubles to 18 per 25 sweeps. Now, whenever we reach the R6 and a half growth stage, when that membrane separates from that pod wall, that's whenever we can terminate insecticide applications for uh, stink bugs, for our normal stink bugs, green and brown stink bugs, as well as our defoliating uh, insects. However, for red banded stink bug, our threshold is four to five per 25 sweeps. And then whenever we reach R6 and a half for red bands, that's when we actually double our, our threshold for that insect. And we have to continue spraying for it all the way up through R7. So with this year's soybean crop being as late as it is, you have to remember that the yield potential is gonna be off on these soybeans somewhat for many fields. And what that means is that growers need to be mindful of how they're gonna spend their money on some of these fields and whether an insecticide application is really gonna give them a good return on their investment. With that, I'd like to thank the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board and the growers of the state for their continued support of our program.